OBS Medical has its origins in Oxford University um, and we have a, several uh, lines of business with technology to offer various aspects of healthcare. One of our major lines is in uh, telehealth um, and with the NHS needing to save money and improve health outcomes then innovation is the name of the game and we have some of that innovation available here fully tested and evidence-based and we would like to help by deploying that uh, for the patients and the NHS in this country. How many of us now go into a bank, wait in the queue to go and see the uh, clerk at the, at the screen and sign a cheque to yourself to get some cash out of the bank? You don't do that anymore. What you do is you take your plastic card, you go to the hole in the wall, you get your cash. Everybody's pleased about that, I think, because it's a much more efficient and easy way to get your cash. So now if we look ahead, uh, with healthcare, then you know, the current model is all about where you go to see the nurse or the GP in your local surgery, you're referred on to hospital. So there's a whole lengthy process that governments have struggled with all around the world, not just in the UK, um, about how do you reach the care that you need most efficiently, care pathway. Then you have the cost of hospitals, and you can imagine that a hospital is more or less a glorified hotel with an awful lot of expensive equipment, uh, nurses, doctors, cleaners, all the rest of it. There's a huge cost associated with what we would call secondary care in hospitals. So the movement to uh, move care into the community is largely driven by the need to save money, be more efficient and productive. Um, and I don't see that as anything particularly threatening. Sometimes people could hear that and say, oh, it's just to save money. Well, actually, no. What's happened is that we now have technology. So in the same way that the banks thought, hang on, how can we dispense cash more efficiently and give the customers actually a better experience? Then we should turn that and think about it in the terms of healthcare as well. So now we have the technology to um, measure ourselves at home, so there's improvement in diagnostic equipment. Um, we have vast improvements in communications technology. Um, we all live with it. Um, I think there's more than, is it one and a half mobile phones per person in the UK? So why wouldn't we use a mobile phone to man help manage our healthcare? We're all familiar with broadband and PCs and television. There's lots of technology in our lives. So people are saying, well, hang on, why can't we use this to improve our healthcare? So the, the whole thing is, it's, I guess it's a mix of the need to save money, the need to do things better. We all want to live a healthier life, or at least I think we do. Um, so why not use technology? If technology can give us an innovation that changes the goalposts, moves them away and says, okay, we don't have to do healthcare as we've done it for the last century or so. If we use what we've got, then why not? Um, so what have we been doing? We've been trying to prove that actually, yes, we can. It does improve the health outcome and it does save money. Hence, there is this movement to try and reduce the cost from the expensive secondary care and move it out into the community. And that means much more than just telehealth, of course. It might mean more in the way of clinics, um, community hospitals, um, and improving and increasing the amount of work that the GPs perform as well. And that's contained in the latest government white paper. Our products, uh, driven by the uh, rising levels of obesity largely, then I'll start with diabetes. Um, our diabetes uh, system enables patients to input their readings. The NHS is interested in managing people's blood glucose. Uh, that's not the only uh, measure of health in diabetes. So to monitor your condition and help you improve. Um, then there are other factors as well. Blood pressure is an important one. Um, with diabetes, it's often treated more or less as a heart condition in the end. Um, because it affects the way the blood flows around the body and so on. So our, our diabetes product enables people to input uh, the time that they've taken the reading. Um, we can help people titrate, as they call it, which is how you move on to insulin um, and get the level of insulin that you need just right. 
um, we can measure the amount of exercise that people are taking uh, by just asking a series of simple questions. So they can input the amount of insulin, blood glucose, they can, we can configure it to run things like uh, blood pressure and weight as well. So it's a highly configurable system and it gives feedback to the patient straight away, whether that's on their mobile phone or their PC. And if they have access to a PC, then they can also go onto their own website and have a look at how they're doing. Now that data having been captured can also be seen by the patient's own doctor and nurse at the local surgery. And we also couple that to a telenursing service. So somebody's watching out for them. Um, and if they get into a, a, a problem, uh, maybe they've got a too high a blood glucose or too low, and that's hyper and hypoglycemia, um, then the nurse will call the patient and have a conversation to see how they're doing and whether or not they really need to go and see the doctor. So this is an example of telehealth providing a information back to the patient, also to the clinicians who are responsible for their care, and giving them this, this person, if you like, in a helicopter watching over them all of the time. So if they're getting into difficulty, if they're not managing the condition very well, there's going to be a phone call um, and a conversation to help them get back on track. OBS Medical is filled with people who are passionate about this. We, um, if you go back to our origins from Oxford University, we all buy into the passion of Professor Tarasenko. So Lionel is a keen enthusiast for this. Why would we not use technology to help us manage our healthcare? I gave the example earlier of the way we go to the automated teller machine at the bank to get our cash out. Who would want to go back to signing checks at the counter to get your money? I expect that in 15 years time, if we were to look back at this period and say, gosh, is that how we used to do healthcare? Um, so I'd rather we look back and think, I'm glad we adopted telehealth and it's the way we do things. Now, if the NHS is to save the money it needs to save, the targets it's been set, if our clinicians are to improve the health care of the population, if our patients are to engage in better management of their own health, we need to give them the information and enable them, them to do so. It's difficult to imagine how we would do that without telehealth. So, to conclude, I would say we have some of the innovation. We don't have it all, of course not. We, our approach is to be collaborative because in the end, the people who will improve patients' healthcare are actually the patients and the clinicians, not us. But we can enable that to happen, so we have a role to play. By its nature and by what I'm describing, our approach is, and truly and sincerely, is collaborative. We know we're part of the picture. We are an enabler of change. But change to the care pathway is what's needed and we need people to be encouraged to do this and engage in it. So we're enthusiasts, we're collaborative, but we feel very strongly that we can be part of this introduction of innovation to improve health outcomes and save money.